What's going on guys? It is Bernardo and today is all about installing and configuring KMS Server, which KMS stands for Key Management Services. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I want to build a KMS server to activate and license a bunch of my machines that I have at my lab. I'm going to be working on two virtual machines right now. One is my domain controller because I'm going to show you guys how to create a GPO. And the other server is called KMS, which is where I'm going to install the services. So on my domain controller, I am going to open up my group policy management. And from here, I'm going to locate group policy objects. And I'm gonna right click on that folder, click on new. I'm going to give it a name. This is what I'm going to give it, click okay. Locate your new GPO, right click on it, and then go to edit. Within edit, we're going to go inside computer configuration. Within computer configuration, we're going to open up policies. Within policies, we're going to open up Windows settings. Within Windows settings, we're going to go inside security settings and we're going to locate Windows Firewall with Advanced Security. Open that up. Open up Windows Firewall with Advanced Security, which is another name. It gives you the same name as the root folder, which is weird, but it also gives you inbound rules and outbound rules. Now, the one that we're going to create is an inbound rule. So select it, right click on it, and then click on new rule. Within here, we're going to pick port, click next. Now, the port that we need is 1688, which is what KMS uses. So we need to allow it, all right, for inbound. Click next here, allow the connection. Next, you are able to apply this rule to a domain, private or public. This is up to you. But within my lab, I left everything as the default and I clicked on next. Give it a name. This is the name that I provided and then click on finish and then close out. Now this particular GPO, I am going to apply to my server's OU. So I'm gonna right click on that OU. I'm going to link an existing GPO, locate my new GPO, and then click okay, and there we go. So let's head into my KMS server. Make sure you have the server manager up and running and on the upper right-hand side, let's click on manage. Let's click on add roles and features. Let's click next here. Next, next, and for the server roles, we are going to locate volume activation services. Give it a check mark, click on add features, click on next, next again, uh, volume activation services. If you want, take note of this, read it, it's up to you. Click next there, install. It's going to start installing the volume activation services. Once it's done, it's going to give you this. Now locate where it says volume activation tools. It is a hyperlink. So click on it. It's going to launch this nice little wizard. We're going to click next here. It's gonna to try to retrieve the KMS information from the computer. Once it's done, you need to copy and paste or type it in your KMS host key. Now the KMS host key that I entered was, I believe a Windows Server 2019 KMS data center key. Boom, that allows me to activate Windows 10, Windows 11 and Windows 2019 server. 2016 server edition operating systems. Once you enter that information, click on commit. You're going to get a progress bar stating installing the product key on the computer. Once it completes, it's going to give you this. Uh, leave it as the default, click on next. Again, retrieving KMS information from the computer. Once it's done, it is time for us to activate our key. So click on commit, click yes here. Performing the VL activation, if everything goes well, it should give you this information and allow you to click on next. Retrieving the KMS information again from the computer, it's gonna take you here. Because I'm doing everything within the lab, I made sure that my private domain in public uh, is checked off. Most likely if you're doing it within your nine to five job, you are only going to check off domains. Uh, once you're satisfied with this, click on commit. This will overwrite existing KMS configurations, yes. 
Restarting the software, licensing, service, please wait. Once that's done, configuration is completed. And then you're able to basically close that and then close here and then close your server manager. If you go inside your DNS manager and you open up your forward lookup zone folder and go inside your domain and go inside the underscore TCP folder, you're going to see your new VLMCS uh, key. Awesome. Double click on it and it created successfully. All right, so let's head back into the KMS server. I'm going to click on the start button. I'm going to type in CMD. I'm going to right click on the command prompt and run it as an administrator. And the first command that we're going to run is the following. And we're going to hit enter and it should give you this. Now, a bunch of zeros, nothing is happening. And I got my little black book right here because I got some notes. And the reason why I got zeros is it takes some time for it to start producing counts. And the reason why is because it takes about five servers for it to start activating. So on the sixth server that it sees, right, you create five virtual machines or five physical servers or whatever you want. And on the sixth virtual machine or the sixth physical machine that you install a Windows server operating system, it's going to give you a count, right? For workstations like Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11, it takes about 25. So on the 26th machine, boom, you're going to start seeing counts, you know, populate on this little section here. So don't drive yourself crazy if you don't see anything here. It just takes some time for the counts to go up. Now, I'm going to right click on the start menu and I'm going to, to select Windows PowerShell admin because it is to make sure that 1688 is able to be pinged and also it is listening. So the first command that we're going to run is the following. We're going to do a test net connection with a parameter of computer name and the computer name of my KMS server and the port. So if everything works well, you should get true. If you get false, that means that your KMS uh, is not able to hit 1688 and your GPO wasn't pushed down correctly, just do a GP update force. Another command that you want to do is get net TCP connection. If you hit enter, just locate 1688 within the list and you should see that it is listening. That is a good sign. And that's it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video and I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.